Matter of fact, and it's a special hookah loaded because we're, oh. we're, we're in Hanukkah, right? Yes. Yeah, we we get we getting our Hanukkah on, so we got the Hanukkah hookah loaded for you. Okay. Yeah, drag deep of that. Blast off in the outer space with the mind word, mind blowing word of God. Baby. Yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. Party with Yeshua Most High because he's the ultimate party of God. Man. You know, he had a lot of festivals. Yo, oh, yeah. Like to party. Yep. That's right, and that's what we're looking forward to, Lord. We want to drink that new wine. And party with you forever. Yes. Because you are a rock star for real. <laughs> All right. All right. That being said, let us get our high priest and king up in here to edify us with the counsel of the Holy Spirit. That Lord, may our study be a blessing to you. Uh, your word is just a, a, a daily celebration. You blow our minds every time we flip through these pages and you just jump off these pages, just telling us who you are and uh, you are the man. And uh, that's what we're trying to, to let folks know that you are worthy. You are worthy yes. to bow down to and to serve forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, his name. name. Amen. Amen. Let's do it. We got. Uh, Leviticus 6 going on in here. Leviticus, man, that sounds like a Zodiac sign. It kind of does. Right? Uh -huh. Like you be in a club. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Leviticus. I wonder if we <laughs> I wonder if we compatible. <laughs> right? Okay. Let me uh, get my notes brought up here because uh, my memory is like that long. It's, like, it's my own notes. <laughs> well, actually, technically, it's, 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 you know, it's the Lord instructing here. So I'm just trying to be, you know, uh, you know, repeat what it is that he reads to us. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I just, but, you know, you know, but if, if speaking of prayer, it's like, man, it's, it's, why don't you pray for that? Why don't you pray for that? Why don't you pray for a better memory, man? I would, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> You can't remember to. Ah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. So let's see. And, you know, they kind of help keep me on track and stuff like that. So, all right, y'all, let's read Adonai. OK, uh, let me uh, make this disclaimer really quick. You're going to notice, y'all, that um, our verses are going to be a little bit different from yours uh, because we read from the uh, Jewish uh, family Bible, Jewish messianic Bible. Um, all the literature is still the same, y'all. It's, it's the same information. It's ordered different, though. Like when we uh, went. Um, when they, when the Jew when the, when they put the the Jewish Messianic Bible together, they order it. Uh, they cat it's very it's very categorized, right? Categorized. Uh, um, they take the law writings, bam. They take the prophetic writings, bam. They take the um, the narratives, you know, narratives like your poetry, your history, uh, you know, philosophy and things like that. They're gonna you know uh, categorize those too. So that's how it's it's ordered, and the chapters and the verses are done the same way. Uh, so you'll see the chapters um, or ver and verses. They'll kind of it seems like they'll start where maybe like in your more traditional quote unquote Bibles would would uh, do. So it's not you know. Uh, um, one of those things that's leaving something out or, or anything like that. It's just they, yeah. they have a very categorical approach to it and how they do these. So when I start this, uh, my in our Bible, it'll be one. But for your Bible, it'll be more like Leviticus 6, 8. Mm. Right. So that's where it will pick up for you. Uh, so if you want to start reading from from uh, Leviticus 6, 8, you'll get the same. You'll get the same thing. But you know, just want to say again. There's nothing in here that's that's like uh, different per se in terms of because God being the just God that he is. Amen. He's not going to give us a word that's, that's right. going to leave things in or leave things out without us being able to pick up on it. Right. Yeah. Like people have like different translate translation stuff like that. When God says iron sharpens iron, he means it. It means that you have the manuscripts available. You have trans uh, uh, translations available where you can go and you can double check that Indeed. to make sure the information and the literature is there. Yeah. Right. So God doesn't he doesn't leave us in the dark like that. 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, Leviticus 1, I mean Leviticus 6, 1. Adonai spoke to Moses saying, what's up, what? All right. <laughs> uh, command Aaron and his sons saying, this is the Torah of the burnt offering. The burnt offering should remain on the hearth atop of the altar all night until morning while the fire of the altar is kept burning on it, kept burning on it. The Cohen is to put on his linen garment with the linen undergarments on his body. He is to remove the fat ashes <laughs> from where the fire was, has consumed the burnt offering on the altar. I mean, this sentence is long. No, okay. <laughs> I was like, this is a long, long sentence. I wanted to stop before then. No, it's, I, I saw the period there. Okay. <laughs> altar, altar and put them beside the altar. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Okay. When we right right from the get go, y'all, for your for your verse eight, which is gonna be my verse one, it's gonna say that Adonai spoke to Moses saying, and right there, it cuts. That's a verse. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> but y'all impacting that verse, y'all, packed in that verse, man, is is the heavy of heavies. Cause it says, Adonai spoke to Moses, saying. Now, when we when we say Adonai spoke, the word when we talk about uh spoke. It's like you're you're um, you're declaring. It's it's a declaration. It's it's a command. Um, it's not just um, you know you're saying you know Adonai is is just having some casual conversation uh, with Moses or something like that. It's like no, this is this is uh, when God speaks. This is some heavy declarative mm -hmm. stuff. Um, matter of fact, it's the kind of declaration where what he's saying is is just straight up law. Yeah. And inside of that word, when we talk about uh, um, he spoke, it's it's also uh, including in its meaning destruction. Right. Wow. So basically what it's saying is, is that when I speak and if you don't adhere to what it is that I'm saying to you, um, it ends in destruction. And that word and that word is the bar, y'all. So. Um, and that's why I say it's a standalone verse, because you got the word of God that includes in these things, these meanings. But remember, y'all, the word of God is totaling to be Yeshua. Wow. Yeshua is the living word of God. So God is letting you know through this whole instruction, my son is going to show up. Your redeemer is going to show up and you got to listen to him. Yeah. Right. He is my living word. He's my son. He is my signet. You see him, you see me. Amen. Right? Yeah. If you don't if you ain't down with that, it will result in destruction. Yep. So that's what God is. So when it says Adonai spoke to Moses saying, that's that's going to be backed up by this whole book hmm. to let you know what God where God is coming from. Okay, um let's see. Um y'all bear in mind that Yeshua himself he is the salvation and he is the destroyer, right? Mm. So it's like, well, what is it that we need salvation from? You need salvation from Yeshua. He tells you, he's like, man, I didn't come to judge, but I'm gonna. Yeah. Right? Now, that's a sign, and, and I, I will say this again, it may seem to some people that it's not fair. It's like, well, what is, 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 uh, does Yeshua like come for like, is he like the mob that comes for protection money? You don't do what I say or you don't pay your, your, uh, your tribute, then we're gonna come and level you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, let's see. yes. Okay. No, uh, just kidding. Here's the thing, y'all. Yeshua being the just judge that he is, is one is our vindicator and he brings that justice. Those who deny who Yeshua is, y'all, if you deny the word of God, like it or not, you are agents of destruction. Yeah. When we get away from God's statutes, when we think that we're too good for God or we know better than God, or we, God we cause problems. Yes. All right. We're going to cause problems. Even even though even those of us who do love God can be knuckleheaded. Yeah. Right. So and cause problems. That's just we're just imperfect people. And God understands that. Right. But you have a better chance of preserving a better world if you stick to what God says. Amen. All right. Now, if you feel like, hey, well, you know, I don't need to do things God, God's way. And we're going to go off and because the Bible tells us that, you know, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it's way leads to death. Yep. Right. If you're going to be one of these agents of death. Well, then, yeah, it will be salvation from God's wrath that you're going to need. Right? right. That we need. Right. So um, 
that's where, like I said, when we're talking about Debar, when God speaks, it's like, look, this is what I got to say. If you ain't down with it, it leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, let's see. And, um, now, let's look, uh, look at uh, this is the Torah of the burnt offering. right? The Torah, y'all, the instruction. When we say the Torah, it's not just the law, but it's the instruction. What is the instruction? Yeah. Yeshua is the instruction. We're learning about him. He's teaching us who he is. So when he shows up, you recognize him, yeah. right? Um, the burnt offering should remain on the hearth, on top of the altar. Oh, wait, hold up. Uh, this is the Torah of the burnt offering. The burnt offering should remain on the hearth, the top of the altar all night. All right. And let's, uh, let's look at that word saying, because um, command Aaron and his sons saying, when we say saying, so he's going to say, speak this, or he spoke to them, and he says, I want you to say this saying. When it says saying, the word for that is lamor, right? Mm -hmm. Lamor. And basically, lamor means to report. It's like to testify. You're not just, it's, this isn't like just some, something that you're going to repeat, right? It's heavier than that. You are going to testify. You heard this you are given the authority from the authority of authorities that when you come and speak this, you are vouching for this. You are you are certifying mm -hmm. that you just you heard the straight up truth. Right. Yeah. And who hears it from you needs to recognize that you have spoken truth from the who is the truth himself. Mm. Right. So that's what that's saying. Um, let's see. And when it's talking about. Um, Leaving, making sure that this uh, this hearth, the hearth is lit all night long, <laughs> right? We're going to keep this thing lit all night long, y'all. Y'all, that's a picture of the work of Christ because, y'all, the labor to keep this thing lit, you got to constantly, you know, gotta make sure that you're pulling, you know, removing the ashes, getting the wood on wow. it, you know, and all that sort of stuff. You know, you know what's up. Um, to keep this thing lit, ain't no, you know, it's not like an easy task, <laughs> right? But this is a picture of Yeshua who is going to do that atonement work mm -hmm. and make sure, because y'all, the thing is, the altar is a picture of New Jerusalem, right? Everything about the tabernacle represents who Yeshua is, what's going to happen to him and what he's going to be doing. Right. right. This is that's what the education of the tabernacle is. It points to, to, to who he is, and what he's going to do, yeah. and what's going to happen to him. Right. And included that, including that is what represents New Jerusalem with that. And that's where the altar comes in. The altar is a picture of New Jerusalem. Mm. It's still tied to Yeshua because Yeshua is the lamp and the lamb that perpetually lights New Jerusalem because of him. New Jerusalem will be lit forever. Yes. It's a light that never goes out. The altar is a picture of that. The light of the altar, the fire of the altar is never supposed to go out. Wow. Right. Okay. So, um, when we talk about the hearth, the hearth is, uh, means, or, or the word for hearth is maqueda, uh, from the word maqued, and it means fuel. So when we talk about fuels that are in the tabernacle, we got that olive oil, Mm -hmm. Which points to Yeshua, right? Points to Israel. Olive, uh, uh, the olive itself is going to uh, is a uh, representation of Israel, and Yeshua himself being the ultimate fruit of Israel. Uh, you got the fat. The fat from the animals is is used as fuel to um, um, to give more burning power. Um, you got the wood. Uh, is also going to be a, a source of fuel. And remember, y'all, all these things they point to Yeshua. The the word for fuel uh, for wood is etz hmm. and etz incidentally means carpenter <laughs> coincidence come on man I don't think you know so. as i say yeshua is either the king of kings or the king of coincidence right yeah right uh so when we say when we talk about the altar and the altar for where for altar is zabak and zabak means to slaughter or sacrifice hmm. and we know that yeshua is the slaughtered lamb we know that he is the ultimate sacrifice Right. And this wasn't like, like some sacrifice where where it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, take uh, somebody up to a volcano and toss them in or something like that. This, this ain't that kind of sacrifice. This is the right. kind of sacrifice as a soldier. Right. Yeah. No draft exemption for this royalty. Y'all. Yeshua went to the front lines of this battle to take on the ultimate enemy. Death. Yes. Right. The greatest enemy of us all. Right. Death. The signature of the devil. Hmm. Right. So. 
Yeshua was positioned for battle for that. When he was sacrificed, more like he was sacrificed in the way that he sacrificed himself and throwing himself over a grenade. Mm. Right. That kind of sacrifice. Not like, you know, I'm going to throw myself in a volcano uh, for, for some ritual or anything like that. No, he died a soldier. <laughs> Amen. All right. Um, let's see. Um, linen garment. So when we get to this linen, let's read this a little bit. Uh, take it from. Um, forgive me if I, if I don't remember what verse it would be in your Bible for, for ours. It's going to be three. I guess if you do the math on it, you just like count like, you know, three steps ahead or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Cohen is to put on his linen garment with the linen undergarments, his drawls on his body. He is to remove the fat ashes from where the fire was consumed and burnt offerings on the altar and put them beside the altar. Then he is to take off his garments uh, put on other ones and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. All right. Uh, okay. So when we talk about these linen garments, y'all, the linen garments, the word for linen garments this time is going to be med. All right. When we talk about this aspect of the garments, the word is going to be med and it comes from the word, uh, medad. Uh, and it, and it means, um, to measure. Hmm. Stuff with that. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, you know, it's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm getting a little too big from riches. I don't know, you know, something like that. Okay, but uh, that's that's going to be included in the meaning of this word. It's like, why, God? Why? What does what me putting on these clothes have to do with measuring, yeah. right? Okay, so, madai, meaning to measure. And, and just a side note, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, med uh, is used as opposed to the, you know, we, we learned that the, the, the general... A uh, word that's used for the priestly garments is beged, and beged means treachery. God let us know He's prophesying even through what He clothed them in. Amen. Your clothes mean treachery, and the priests were treacherous to Yeshua, weren't yes. they? Right. So God, He's He's even through their clothes, every everything, every article in there. God is prophesying. These I'm teaching. I'm edifying you with the with the construction of the tabernacle and art, all the articles therein. It's pointing to Yeshua. You, you guys are dwelling in this, Amen. right? This is the yeah. tent of meeting. You should you should be in the construction of this. You should know the full breakdown of this dwelling place. So when He shows up. He shouldn't be so alien to you. He should be like, oh, yeah, right. man, we've been waiting for you, bro. Yeah. Man, bust out with that, you know, whatever it is. What do you want to eat? <laughs> you want some fish? You want some bread? Want some bread? I'll bet you want some fish. You know, I hear that you like fish. And bread, too. I, I, know, I heard you like some bread. You know, so they should recognize these things. Yeah. Right? Okay, so um, let's see. Um, hold up. So just, um, you know, wanted to reiterate as I'm looking at my notes. Sometimes I get ahead of myself on my own notes, y'all. Bear yeah. with me. All right. Um, let me see. So everything that's in the uh, in the tabernacle is pointing him. Doesn't matter what it is, man. Whether it's the wood, whether it's the the incense, the the tongs, the the the, the burning coals, you name it. It's pointing to him. Who, uh, what he's gonna do, and what's gonna happen to him, right? Okay. Let's see. Um, now that includes, of course. I want to get back to this altar, y'all. This altar that is covered is made of. Acacia wood in the Hebrew meaning shatim, right? Uh, shatim wood itself means whipping, thorny, and scourged, and a tree that covers. Yeshua is that guy, right? Yes. And this altar is going to be covered with bronze, right? Remember, y'all, Yeshua is represented in the bronze in redemption, repentance, and salvation. Hey, Moses. Hold up that bronze serpent. So when they see it, they can be saved. Yes. They can be healed. Looking on it is you repenting. God said, just look at it. Just look at it. You got to get over yourself. Yeah. You're like, really, all I got to do is look at, this, look at this serpent. Right? Look at it. Redeemed. Yeah. Oh, I feel better now. Right? <laughs> God, the ultimate healer, right? And, and uh, you know, people think that this, this, uh, this serpent on a staff thing began with uh, Asclepius or something like that, or, you know, the, uh, the staff of Mercury. No, 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 no. They <laughs> bit them rhymes out of the Old Testament. Amen. Moses old school on that. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. And, y'all, I want I to point out, you know, how this, this, um, this altar is uh, indicative of... Um, of New Jerusalem, because just like we said, the clothing that they're going to be putting on is 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 uh, this this linen garment is called med, 
And like I said, it means to measure. And what we want to look at here is we want to look at um, Revelation 21, 15. And the angel who spoke with me had a golden measuring rod mm. to measure the city and the gates and walls. Revelation 21, 22 through 23. But I saw no temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Yeshua, are its temple and the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it because the glory of God illuminates the city and the lamb, Yeshua, is its lamp. Wow. Right? That lamp. Uh, Hanukkah. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. That, 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 that menorah represents Yeshua. Amen. Right? All the way down to the staff of the, of the lamp. Break down the meaning yeah. of the word staff, y'all. What does it mean? It means thigh. What? Very strange. Right? Why would that mean thigh? But it means thigh. And what does, and isn't it when Yeshua comes back? Right? When Yeshua comes back, he has it written yeah. on his thigh. Yeah. Right? Because he's, he's going to keep that oath all the way down. All the way down to that level. Right? So when he shows up written on his thigh. Right? You got the king of kings coming. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So Yeshua is that light. He is that lamp. He is that light. Yeah. And he is what's going to keep New Jerusalem perpetually lit. That's a picture of what's going on with this altar. Yeah. You got to keep it lit. Right. But oh, Yeshua is the atoning sacrifice that will keep it. He's done the yes. perfect work that can keep it perpetually lit. Right. Right. Well, okay. That was good. Heck yeah. He a good. He, he good. He, he good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, so now we're going to talk about um, these. uh these draws here. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, now the word, it's going to talk about, um, actually it's when it talks about these linen undergarments. So um, the word that's going to be used for linen in these undergarments is going to be bad. <laughs> hmm. Interesting choice of words. That it is a bad, mm -hmm. your bad draws. All right. <laughs> uh, and, the word is, and, and the word bad here, it means separated. OK, like separated, isolated, divided from. Mm. All right. So now why is this important? You know, it's like, God, why you got to bring up draws, man? It's like, <laughs> is, that, is it really that important that we got to talk about the priest's underwear? Really? <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Um, because, uh, well, sometimes that's where everybody's mind is anyway. <laughs> I think you actually like this. I don't think you're like, do we have to talk about this, God? You're like, yay. Busted. <laughs> okay. <And laughs> yeah, so you're so saintly, you and your potty humor. All right. Uh, so we're going to have, uh, that's what this is talking about, y'all. This, this separation, this isolation, this divided from. Here's the thing, y'all. This is pointing to the ultimate work that Yeshua is going to be doing leading up to his division from the Godhood, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to be, it's going to lead up to his division from the Trinity. Yeshua, this, if, there, if there's anything that Yeshua can do that God can't, is die. Oh my. Right? Yeshua can die. God doesn't die. Technically, yeah. I mean, because Yeshua and, and, and God are still one. I mean, yeah, but Yeshua, what God has come through the human person of, of, of vessel of Yeshua to be able to die for our atonement. Right now in that this makes the division between Yeshua and the Godhood. Right. So this is being spelled out right here. There's going to be this separation. Now, Yeshua, when he dies on the cross, y'all, the most offensive thing that you can be to God is dead. Hmm. It's the most offensive thing that you can be to God. Dead. He ain't God of the dead. He's God of the living. Yeah. Right? So now, Yeshua does this atonement work. And for him to be dead, he's separated from God. But his atonement was perfect, though. Right? perfect atonement and God has already established it beforehand Yeshua said I have the authority to lay down my life right just as it says in John 10 17 through 19 the reason the father loves me is that I lay down my life 
in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down my life on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from, I received from my daddy. Again, there was divi a division, <laughs> there's that word division again, yeah. among the Jews because of Jesus' message, right? So now, Yeshua, upon dying on the cross, now, and now, now some, uh, you know, some take that as, you know, Yeshua, you know, basically died whenever he felt like it. And, and, and incidentally, you know, God gave, uh, you know, Yeshua the ultimate CPR, <laughs> breathe that light back into Amen, he, right? He's, yeah, right? Because this is how this works, y'all. Yeshua breathed out. He breathed his last. He breathed out the Holy Spirit, right? Upon doing that, because of the work that Yeshua did, because y'all, y'all think about this. Think about this. Yeshua is dead. He died. When you're dead, you don't have the conscience to make another decision. Mm. Right? Amen. That's right. Yeah. He's inanimate. Gone. Yeah. However, God, remember Yeshua is the second Adam, y'all. He's the second Adam. Which means that God, just like with the first Adam, breathed life into him. Right? In Yeshua's case, the second Adam, God breathed life back into him. The Holy Spirit returned to Yeshua. Right? Just as the Bible, the Bible talks about the Spirit returning. Yeah. Right? The Bible uh, talks about it. So <laughs> in, this, in this case, when Jesus died on that cross and was put into that tomb... The Holy Spirit was breathed back into Yeshua mm. and Yeshua went back to work. Mm. Yes. Right? It went right back to work. So, but y'all, when Jesus is dead, that's the separation. The word for linen in here, bad, meaning to be isolated from, divided, separated from, wow. which Yeshua was. All right? So, and I want to make it clear, y'all, um, you know, because people talk about, you know, Yeshua wasn't killed you know when this talks about uh, like when they read when they read john 10 17 uh the reason why the father loves me is that i lay down my life in order to take it up again no one takes my life from me people take that as that jesus was never killed right like he died on the cross but he only died because you know god uh into your hand i commit my spirit and he breathed out it's like well when jesus says that he's saying god the breakdown of that word is i entrust my spirit to right. you, my, my everything I entrust it to you. Because when y'all, he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. And my God, man, why, why, right? Why have you forsaken me? Now, a lot of people take that as, as Yeshua repeating what David had said, which is true. But Yeshua was really in the dark about this. He really was, right? He didn't ask it just to, 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 to recite something. Because y'all, the thing is for him to recite that means that he was totally operating out of faith. If he knew the full score on this, that wouldn't be faith now, would it? Amen. The yes. ultimate obedience was him to do what he did without knowing the yes. full score of it and trusting God yes. all the way. And the ultimate humility in putting himself under that authority to entrust everything to God. That's right. Full on obedience. Yeah. So he says, God, into your hand, I entrust my spirit. I don't know why we got to do it like this. I don't know. I don't know why, why are you forsaking me? Right? But I trust you. So now you have people who think that, you know, uh, nobody could kill Jesus. He, he only died, you know, because he's like, it's finished and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to die now. You know, I, I'm going to die because I feel like dying now. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. They killed him. Right? Yeshua is just like you said, they, he submitted to being killed by the hands of Men. And, let, and, and the only thing here is, y'all, nobody killed Jesus unless he let them. He already made that clear. Right. Right. The only reason why you could come and arrest me is because I'm going to let you, man. You, obviously, you don't get who I am. Yeah. Right. Uh, but we're going to do this. Uh, and it actually, even Jesus did give him things like, look, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that just to let you know. When you come and ask me, are you Yeshua? Yeah, I am. And they all fell down and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm God. Yeah. You want to arrest me now? <laughs> Only because I'm going to let you. Amen. All right. So now in that sense, yes, but they all, the bottom line is, is that they still killed him. He was perfectly murdered. 
Mm-hmm. Right? right? They killed him. So as as and just to back that up, y'all, this isn't my speculation. This is from him himself. Mark 3, 1. Because he was teaching his disciples, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. Matthew 16, 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes. Oh, they suffer many things. What, you mean they were going to be treacherous to him? Mm. The priests were going to be treacherous to him, just like it was taught in the tabernacle? Ah, come on, y'all. Yeah. Um, they were going to be, um, and the scribes, and that he must be killed. And on the third day be raised to life. Mark 8, 31. Then he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and scribes. So it's just repeating it again. And that he must be killed and three days later rise again. Even Mark 10, 34 says the same thing. I'll just, uh, uh, just condense. I'll jump right to it. Um, Who will mock him? If we read verse 34, who will mock him, spit on him, flog him and kill him. Okay, Yeshua was killed. This wasn't something where he's like up on the cross, like I feel like dying now, right? Right. No, 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 no. He's been putting up with this for a while, and he had to make sure that every angle of this orchestration was covered. This was a painstaking process that began not just when his ministry started; it began with the transgression of Adam. Amen. He's been working on this for a long time, y'all. Yeah. To make sure that every aspect of everything that we spoke about him would be covered to the perfect T. Mm. He didn't get to die any second or any second later than that. Not when he felt like it. Not mm. just to say that I'm God and I'll die whenever I feel like it. No. He was obedient and submissive to this whole orchestration for our atonement. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. All right. Um... Okay, so now let's get back to them draws. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just as a side note, you mm. took us through mm. different um, different accounts, Mark, Matthew, Mark again, mm. showing us that the, the word of God says he must be killed. He will be killed. Mm-hmm. It says killed. Killed, right? He was executed. Yeah. Definitely, definitely killed by the yeah. hands of men. Amen. All right. Um, okay. So when we when we talk about um, these draws, the word for that is is mickness. And um, mickness is coming from the word canis. And it basically means to collect. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> to collect and gather. What? <laughs> she give me the look. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, we can just only imagine what could be, coll- you know, collected in them draws. We don't have and, to uh, go there. As, 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 what is that joke? Is uh the, so the guy was in a hurry, you know. Uh, the doctor requested a a uh, some samples, you know, urine samples, some um, s- stool samples, uh, other kinds of samples. And the guy says, "Hey, doc, look, I'm in a hurry. Can I just leave my underwear?" Right? <laughs> because <laughs> Lord. what is the doctor looking for? Information. Yeah. Right. True. That's what I need. I need you know these samples so I can get the information. And what's collected in these draws? Information. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's information even in the underwear of the <laughs> even in the underwear of the priest, y'all. And this information is basically this: the information regarding the crappy things that's gonna happen to Yeshua. Amen. All right? Yeah. That's the information that's gonna be in there. Also, uh, Mickness is going to be associated with the word kamak that also facilitates this word. And the and what it means, y'all, is to store away particularly store away memory, right? That's what it's talking about. So the thing is, y'all, what does Yeshua, what is an iconic statement of Yeshua? Do this in remembrance of me. How many times we said this, y'all? This ain't about Yeshua saying, okay, I want you to remember what we did here this day going forward. And I want you to make, you know, uh, one of those, uh, who's it? Michelangelo pictures of the the Last Supper. And that's what you're going to remember going forward. No, no. When we talk about the tabernacle, y'all, we got the memorial offerings. God is really focused on them having a memorial. I need you to remember this. Yeah. Right. When I'm talking about this right here, even in them draws, I need you to remember this all the way down to them draws. <laughs> right. Remember, store this away in your memory, You're in your memory. So when Yeshua says, do this to remember this for me, I want you to focus right now. Do you remember who I've always been? Amen. 
Don't, it's not just about remembering who I am to you now going forward. It's about remembering who I've always been. Yes. That was me back at that tabernacle. It's always been me, yes. right? When Moses codified this whole thing, that was me. I was here before that doing things. Amen. And Moses was called to put these things to account, right? Okay, so um, now the undergarments, of, you know, of course, y'all, is for concealing the private parts, right? In this case, definitely we're talking about them, um, them testicles. Where we get words like test, where we get words like testify, testimony, testament, right? That's where these words come out of. Because when it comes to these things, y'all, if you're going to step up to the test, you got to have the testicles. You got to have the testicular fortitude to do that. Step up to the test, test step up to the testament. A lot of times people are afraid to testify, right? Yeah. And I don't want to testify. It may cost me my life. Yeah. You got to have the nads, right, to be able to do that. Yeah. So now we're yeah. talking about, and, and y'all, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. We both have testosterone. In women, testosterone is converted into estrogen, right? But that nature, that, that disposition to be able to have that aggression, to step up to the challenge, that's testosterone. Yeah. All right? So when we talk about this test, to be able to put this whole testimony together, that's going to be the test of that. Incidentally, y'all, and, and I want to go back to when we talk about, as we were um, talking about that menorah and the light, the, le the, the staff of the, of the menorah, which means thigh. Remember, y'all, this goes all the way back, y'all, because when you, when you take that oath, like when, when uh, you have the, uh, was it Abraham, it says, put your hand under my thigh right. and take this oath, right? Yeah. Remember, y'all, Yeshua's coming down through this descendancy, y'all. You are, you are blessing the lineage. Yes. Get your hand under there. You're going to swear an oath to me because it's a very personal thing, y'all, right? But when you take this solemn oath, you got to get your hand under the thigh to where your hand meets the testicles, right? I know it's, it's hey, it's nothing, it's nothing weird, right? They're not make, trying to make it weird or anything no. like that, but it's like the test. When we say testicle, that's where this word test comes from. Yeshua passed the test. He passed every aspect of the test. He is worthy of the testimony. He is worthy of this whole testament. So when it says, get your hand up underneath there and swear by me, we're going to make a solemn oath here. We're going to make a pact here, buddy. Mm -hmm. Right? Get your hand up under that thigh. That menorah, the staff of the menorah is the thigh. Yeshua is the fulfillment of that oath because when he comes back, it's written on his thigh. I kept my promise to you in blood. Yes. All the way down from there, I passed the test. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I am worthy of the testimony. Amen. Right? It's all him, y'all. Um, so, okay. So let's see. So we got the memory. And, and, uh, and <laughs> it's funny how God works because you know that after we spent this time talking about them draws, you're going to remember that. <laughs> Very true. Don't you forget it. Okay. <laughs> so now, but these things, y'all, dig this. <clears throat> I want uh, another reason why I wanted to go here, y'all. Well, the, the the Lord, the Lord is bringing us here anyway because it's written in His Word. We talk about their draws. <laughs> um, see, y'all, when Yeshua was uh, was executed, he was denied these things. Y'all, these are priestly garments. Yeah. Yeshua, our, our high priest, was stripped of these garments. You don't go before the priest. Don't go before God without none of this stuff on. Right? All these articles had to be on them. Any deviation of any of these articles could result in death. Yeah. You don't go before, the, the priests don't go before God without these. But praise be to Yeshua and the work that he's done. We are now all priests. We can go before Yeshua ourselves. Because when you do, you go before God. He is the signet of God. Yes. Right? He has made us priests. He is our high priest. And because of that, we can go, we can go to him. Right? But the thing is, y'all, considering the statutes, Concerning the priests and how they have to be clothed. Yeshua was denied these. They, they clothed him in mockery. And y'all, and, and, and you know this holds up, y'all, because the, the, uh, in, the, um, in his account, it refers a lot to his clothing. Mm -hmm. What he was going to be wearing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now, in this, when he's executed, our high priest, our king, is hung naked. Some people like to think that he was hung, he had a loincloth on him. He was deprived of all his clothing. They hung him in total shame, right? He was hung up there in shame. You think the Romans cared about his modesty? Man, look at their statues. <laughs> you know, you, you check out the heathen culture of the Romans. 
They didn't care about Yeshua's modesty. <laughs> and neither did the Jews. They wanted him totally humiliated. They wasn't supposed to be executing anybody anyway. Well, because the thing is, the Romans denied them the death penalty. It wasn't legal because they're under Roman rule. The Jews, uh, they lost their death penalty powers. Right. Yeah. Because the Jews, according to Mosaic law, according to the law of God, Jews executed people for doing things that Romans enjoyed. <laughs> right. Romans like homosexuality. Well, according to the law of God, people are put to death for that. Mm. Right. They like incest and stuff like that. God's like, uh, you don't, right? It's a God's, now, <clears throat> one would say, well, I, yeah, exactly. Peter, Peter, I'm, I'm talking like very decadent things oh, yeah. that Romans enjoyed that under the law of God is, is punishable by death. So the Romans took that law, uh, took that sanction away from the Jews. He's like, no, you don't get the death penalty anymore. <laughs> That's a, your, your death penalty is offensive to us, yeah. right? And the Romans are just totally brutal people, right? These yeah. heathens, you know, who torture and all that sort of stuff. But Jesus, uh, Jews, no, you can't do that because we like the things that you guys put right. to, you know, people to death for. Now, just really quick, you know, well, one would say, well, why would God put people to the death penalty? Well, there was a lot of incest in the Bible. Uh, remember, y'all, this is not what God had in mind for us. We weren't supposed to populate the earth this way. Right. All right. When God says, hey, don't eat from that tree, you'll die. That's all God should have had to say. Yeah. Right. God didn't have to include everything. It's like, look, man, you're going to die. <laughs> I don't need to tell you how you're going to die. War, famine, disease, yeah. uh, you name it. You're just going to die. I shouldn't have to explain how you're going to die. Right. And there's going to be a, a whole bunch of other non-system to come up with things <laughs> like uh, uh, perverted stuff. Yep. You know, like incest and all that. The, that wasn't supposed to be for you. Amen. Oh, oh, you're going to eat from a tree anyway. Well, guess what, man? Now you got to now you got to take your sister for a wife. You know, it's yeah. like your kids are going to have to marry, inter, interbreed, all right, to populate the earth. That wasn't supposed to happen for you, okay? So God allowed it. Wasn't God's plan. No. Wasn't something that interested God for, for, for us to have to do, right? But that's how we got here. until And, and it came to a point where God put a statute on it. It says, okay, mm -hmm. no more of this now. All right. I'm going to have to allow this for the world to be populated. I'm going to have to allow this to make sure that the lineage of Yeshua lines up. We got to do that. All right. OK, now, Moses, write that law, man. No more of that stuff. Yeah. OK, well, the Romans like that stuff. Yeah. OK, they did all that stuff. So um, all that to say, y'all, it's not an issue of modesty that they cared about. <laughs> right. It's yeah. not an issue of uh, with, the, with, the, with the Jews. They didn't care about that. So Yeshua was hung naked. Why? Well, once again, y'all, because he's our high priest and this is to, to, to show you that these things would be divided from him, mm -hmm. right? And because the Jews weren't allowed to have the death penalty, it could be argued that the guy that was executed wasn't really Jesus. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, no, wait a no, minute, it couldn't have been Jesus, man, because if Jesus was a Jew and the Jews were demanding to be executed, that can't happen because they're not allowed to execute people, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's That's take, let, let's, let's, let's alleviate that really quick. Hang them up there naked. Oh, oh, snap, he's, uh, he's circumcised. Yeah. Well, is it, and Jesus be like, hey, can you stop pointing at it? Back up, fella. <laughs> it's like, we, we, we get it, I'm a Jew, okay? Yes. He was a Jew that was hung to let you know without a doubt that our high priest and king, a Jew, was executed. Right. So um, moving on, moving on. Let's see here. Take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> um, OK, so now we talk and it goes on again to uh, when we talk about this clean place. Um, we're going to say, we're going to take these ashes, we're going to take them out to the clean place, and y'all, what that's going to represent is this stuff is to be burned up by fire, and y'all, we are, we are burned with the, with the fire of the Holy Spirit, right? And these ashes are going to be taken, they're going to be taken to the clean place, y'all. We're representing those ashes that are removed and taken to the clean place, and when they do this, y'all, they have to put on new garments, they got to put on another set of garments to remove these ashes, y'all, just as we are going to be given new garments, we're a, we're a new creature, y'all. New garment, new body. We're going to be removed. We're, these, these ashes are going to be burned up. 
Hallelujah. Right. I cannot wait. <laughs> oh, man. You know, look, and I'm, I'm talking, you know, party in the sky, rapture all day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's what that's pointing to. And remember, y'all, it's going to talk about positioning the firewood on there. Firewood, it, the word for that is ets, means carpenter. Ah. All right. And you got to lay these things in order, y'all. It's going to tell us that these things have to be laid in order. Uh, like, so we read, um, let's see, remove the fat ashes where the fire has consumed the burnt offering on the altar and put them besides the altar. Then here, take off the garments, put on the other ones and carry off the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. The fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it. It must not go out. Each morning, the cone is to burn wood on it, laying the burnt offering on it in order, right? And burning up as smoke, the fat of the fellowship offerings, fires to be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out, right? Laid in order, y'all. These things have to be laid on it in order. The word for that when we talk about laid in order is Eric, right? Mm -hmm. And when you say Eric, it means to set in battle array, this whole uh -huh. thing is about Yeshua positioning himself for battle with death. His objective is to checkmate death. Right. So that's what we're doing right here. And um, so when it's time, once again, notice how it's repeat. It must not go out. Yeah. Keep it burning. It must not go out. This represents New Jerusalem, the light facilitated by the atonement of Yeshua because it says the lamp and its lamb are its light. Yeshua is the lamp. He is the lamb. He is the mm -hmm. light and he will yes. not go out. Right? He is that ultimate sacrifice that Praise kept this name. thing going. Yes. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, let's see. Then we're going to get to uh, mine's is seven. Now this Torah of the grain offering. Now to this Torah of the grain offering. Once again, y'all. Torah, the law, the instruction. The instruction is Yeshua. Mm. The grain offering, Yeshua is the grain. He is the bread. Yeah. Right? The grain offering. Aaron's sons are to offer it to Adonai in front of the altar. So he is to lift it up from his handful of the fine flour of the grain offering with some of its, excuse me, oil and all the frankincense. Which, and as, as you go back through the, through the list, y'all, we break down the grain, we break down the oil, the frankincense. All this points to Yeshua. It's like, okay, who is Yeshua? He is the bread. He's born the bread. Where is he born? He's born in Bethlehem. What does Bethlehem yes. mean? House of the bread. <laughs> and upon his birth, who's going to be showing up a little bit later? You're going to have them wise men. What, they're gonna, what are they going to bring the bread? Yeah. They're going to bring him some frankincense. Oh, my goodness. The coincidences are just, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just being hit in the face with coincidence. Amen. All right. Uh, so he's lifted up. Okay, read that already. Uh, grain offering and burn it up as smoke on the altar for a soothing aroma as its memorial port Memorial portion. Oh, my goodness. Do this in remembrance of me. That memorial <laughs> thing again. Uh, portion to Adonai. Then what is left from, from it, Aaron and his sons are to eat. It is to be eaten as matzah in a holy place in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Tent of meeting. Get ready to meet Yeshua. Amen. It must not be baked with hammocks. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, like the sin offering. Going to talk about that in a minute. And like the trespass offering, every male among the children of Aaron may eat it as their portion forever throughout your generations from the offerings of Adonai made by fire. Whoever touches them will become holy. All right, y'all. So Yeshua, as we said, is he is that uh, he is that bread baked without yeast. So yeah. notice how in this, y'all, yeast is, is like something that you introduce. Um, and yeast, once again, gets at everything. Remember, y'all, Yeshua was born a sinner, but he never sinned. That's the difference. A lot, a lot of people, you know, like I said, Christians, they hear that and they want to, they, 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 you know, like, you know, start praying in tongues and stuff like that. And, Screeching you know, <laughs> Cursing. <laughs> they, they don't like to hear that. But the only way that Yeshua could die, y'all, is, is to be born a sinner. Remember, yes, Yeshua didn't become sin when he went to the cross. Yeshua became sin the moment he was born. Not before that. The moment he was conceived. Conceived, yeah. The moment he was conceived, he became sin. Why? Because he became something that could die. Mm. 
right? The Bible even tells you that he was subject to death. Death had mastery over him. Yeah. You can only be mastered by death if you're a sinner. Right. Right? But Yeshua's atonement was perfect because he never sinned. I hope folks, I hope folks can really grasp that. How amazing it is. Amazing. <sighs> Man, we, we can barely not... Go to the refrigerator and, and break our own packs with ourselves. I'm not going to snack. I'm not going to snack. You break sins to yourself. We can't even go five minutes without having obnoxious thoughts. Right? <laughs> Dude, we do it all the time. You know, so it's like coveting stuff or whichever. Right. You know, Yeshua, he didn't give it in any of that. That's amazing. That's what makes him so hard. Remember, y'all, the devil wouldn't have bothered coming to tempt Yeshua if Yeshua didn't right. have a sin nature. Yeah. Right? But Yeshua never gave in to it. But he still had to be subject to death because he was born a sinner, right? And this facilitated his separation from God, yeah. right? And because his work was so perfect, because his work still pleased God and he never submitted to sin, God breathed life back into him because Yeshua earned that authority, right? He earned it. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me see. When it's talking about... Um, uh, so Yeshua being this bread baked without yeast, he is the bread baked without yeast. Um, let me see. And remember, y'all, he has, which means that he doesn't have just the authority to eat the bread. The bread represents him as it is. He is that memorial portion. Do this in remembrance of mm, me. Yeah. Um, so now uh, when it's talking about, you know, whatever touch, whoever touches these things will be made holy. Well, how do, how do we get in touch with that? Right. How do we get in touch with these things? You get in touch with it by recognizing who Yeshua says he is. When he tells you that I am there, he's like, look, man, this bread is, you, you don't take it as just some religious uh, practice. All right. Yeah. When I tell you to search the scriptures, I mean it. Break these words down because it is the code of who I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the code of who I am. And when you get in touch with that, you have touched these articles that make you holy. When you okay. can see me in the scriptures, when you recognize that this book is about me, yes. you have gotten in touch with me and you are holy. Yes. Now, from there, what you going to do with it? You going to walk in my statutes or are you going to assume that, oh, no matter what I do, God has forgiven my sins for this? Mm, mm -mm. You, you going to misread his word like that? Uh -huh. Right now, you go see if you understand that he is God and he is who he says he is, you don't partner with your sin, you don't make excuses for it, you struggle with it, you Amen. fight now. I'll right, that. <laughs> the devil gonna do what he's gonna do, right? That's why the yeah. devil is called Beelzebub. Yep, he's, he's the, the lord of the flies, he ain't gonna leave you alone. Flies yeah. don't take a hint, yeah, <laughs> all day, all day, just putting maggots in your mind mm. all the time. Yeah. He will not leave you alone, right? That's why you got to call on the Holy Spirit. Lord, in Yeshua's name, help me out. Help me yeah. out. He's trying to keep me distracted. He's just, just, just garbage. Garbage yeah. that he just, ah, uh, right? All the time. He doesn't stop, right? So that's where you need him. And when you, when you stay in that, you stay in the holiness. Mm. All right? Yeah. Okay, um, so let's see. We read through that. Uh, Adam and I spoke to Moses saying, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which they are to offer to Adonai on the day when he is anointed the 10th part of an ephah, a fine flour for a continual grain offering, half of it in the morning and half of it in the evening. It is to be made with oil on a pan. God like pancakes, mm. right? <laughs> oh, okay, sir. Yeah. <laughs> when it is soaked, you are to bring it to him. You are to present the grain offering in baked pieces as a soothing aroma to Adonai. Bake, so you got you to you take this, you got to bake it, and you got you know, you to break it up. Right? Mm. Sound familiar? Yes. Here's Yeshua. Broke the bread. Broke yes. the bread. Hey, this is my body, man. You recognize me? What do you say? Do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. Remember that this was always me. Right. <laughs> iconic statements. Right? These are iconic statements. Why? So you should reflect on this. It's sad how many Christians they leave out the Old Testament. Man. Oh, yeah. Sad. You know, they just they, they just want the Jesus who's going to do like magic things for them and stuff like that. Right. The magic is seeing who he is. I just man. came across a mm. dialogue today mm. in social media. A sister was trying to tell mm. 
another sister that you, yes, it is the same God in the Old Testament as the new. Yep. Same guy, right? Yeah. And, and that's, man, when you get that, that's when the magic really happens. Amen, it sure does. I'm telling you, man, yep. it's, it's, uh, it's, nothing, it's uh, nothing like knowing who he is. Yeah. You know, the Bible, he, he, this Bible was written basically in blood. You think, you think it was written that way just for it to be a mystery to us? Mm -hmm. And the Lord even talks about it. It's like, look, man, I, I speak in a certain way so people, some people will get it who really want to get it. Amen. Right? And I speak the way that I do because for some people, you know, they, they just may not want to get it. They don't care, you know? And even, and the thing is, also, I, I speak in the way that I do for their protection, Right. Because here's the thing, y'all, if I speak it to them in plain language that they could totally understand, they'll still reject it. Yeah. And then from there, they've got absolutely no excuse and are totally hell bound. Yeah. So I at least position in a way where a person can step up and say, Lord, what did you mean by that? Mm. Right. Because I have the faith that only you can tell me what that means. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, even, even, even the Lord is always trying to protect us from his judgment. Yes, very true. He doesn't want to judge us, y'all. He doesn't want to. He even says, man, I didn't come to judge you. But he knows he's going to have to. Yeah. Right? So even his Murphy, Mercy, <laughs> Murphy, <laughs> right? Speaking of underwear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> even in his, in his mercy, y'all, and he's so merciful. It's like, look, man. I got a job to do. I, I got a job to judge you. Not necessarily that I want to save you. No, nah, yeah. I don't want to judge you. Right? Okay, so even in that, y'all, he's, he's, but he's still got to give this code. So, so those who search, search the scriptures. Seek, you'll find me. Yeah. Okay? It's, this isn't necessarily something that you're supposed to make some ritual religion out of. Oh, no. He literally says in mm. Jeremiah, I'm pretty sure, if mm. you seek me diligently, mm. I will reveal myself to you. That's in the word. Very simple. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it's all right in there. You just start yeah. digging in, man, and you see him. You'll see yep. him. And, and you'll see that he is the liberator from religion. Amen. Right? Yes. When you're given over to religion and stuff like this, it, it's, it's oppression. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God who brings you out of oppression. Yeah. All right? That's what Egypt means. Yeah. Even religion, y'all. It's very oppressive. Oh, it is. Right? Uh -huh. who, can, who can live up to the statutes of their religion? Nobody. According to every religion, everybody's dead meat. Yep. <laughs> Ain't nobody can live up to it. Yeah. I don't care how good you think you are. Nobody can perfectly live by their religion. Yeah. Nobody. Every other religion on the face of the earth mm -hmm. is do works to get into heaven, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> nope. uh, so I, I guarantee you missed a step somewhere. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so Adam and I spoke to Moses offering. Okay, I read that right. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, we were on 12. <laughs> 12? Good on you. Okay. Well, yeah, that's the part I did. Yeah, let's, we'll read it again. It's worth reading again. All right. Mm -hmm. Adam and I spoke to Moses saying, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which he had offered Adam and I on the day when he is anointed, the tenth part of an ephah, a fine flour, and when an ephah, even included in the term ephah, is going to be uh, what's called like a diverse, a di diverse weight, right? Diverse oh, weight, okay. and uh, meaning that uh, God's got His eye on you, right? Don't be trying to shift that weight around, <laughs> try to and, and calibrate it in your favor. You know what I'm saying? You make sure you keep that straight. I, I put it in there, right, to let you know, wow. <laughs> priest, watching you. When you oh, mess well, around that's with that interesting. ephah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, a fine flour because we because we saw that happen. Like even with the money changers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Being diverse with them uh, exchanges mm -hmm. of money, they weren't being honest about that. Even right. y'all, even in them, when God talks about when you break down the word ephah in this, He even includes in it diverse weights. Wow. Right. I Meaning it's like Gazi, I, I got your number. Make sure that you are honest about how you calibrate the things. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> so let's see. Um, half of it in the morning and half in the evening. It is to be made with oil on a pan. When it is soaked, you are to bring, um, okay, bring, present the grain offering and the baked pieces as a soothing aroma to Adonai. Uh, the anointed Cohen, who will be in the place from among his sons, is to offer as an eternal statute. It must be entirely burnt up as smoke to Adonai. God likes burnt toast. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll take a lot of butter for that, Lord. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of oil. <laughs> a lot of oil. I guess that's why you want that olive oil. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're really gonna have to slather that burnt toast that you like. But hey, hey, God, you know it's Burger King, man. You can have it your way. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's see. Burn up a smoke to Adonai. Thus, every grain offering of a Kohen is to be a whole offering. It should not be eaten. When we talk about an eternal statute, y'all, the eternal statute here is not necessarily saying that we're going to be making grain and bread offerings to God forever. The eternal statute has been taken care of by he who is the bread. Mm, yeah. Yeshua is the eternal bread offering. He did what needed to be done that will forever appease God. Amen. Right? So that's taken care of. So because God, he demands it, he's letting you know, this is an eternal statute. Well, thanks be to Yeshua, who is the bread, has taken care of that. Yeah. Nice guy, that Jesus. <laughs> Very. All right. Adonai spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, this is the Torah of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, the sin offering is to be slaughtered before Adonai. It is most holy. All right, let's back that up again. The sin offering is to be slaughtered before Adonai. It is most holy. What do we say about Yeshua? He was born a sinner. He was conceived a sinner, yeah. right? You got to accept that about him, right? He never sinned. He resisted every sin that every man, every woman would give into. He resisted all that. That's what makes him so hardcore. All right. That's what makes him worthy to be king of kings. Absolutely. All right. So he resisted all that to be the sin offering, yeah. which God has decreed even way back here mm -hmm. will be most holy. Amen. All right. That's awesome. So you got people out there trying to make Jesus holy according to what they think. So not my holy Jesus. He was no sinner uh, to be most holy to God. Yeshua had to be a sinner. Hmm. All right. But because Yeshua never submitted to sin, that was even in the nature of his flesh. Because we all remember, y'all, the devil is the prince in the power of the air. If we breathe him in, he's in our blood. Yep. Yeshua breathed too. Right. He breathed that same air. So. With that, him being under that dominion, and it says that death was master over him, means that, y'all, he was a sinner, and only sinners can die, right? Yep. But in doing that, y'all, and what he did, he was the offering that was most holy, all right? Dig it. Yeah. Hardcore Jesus. Um, let's oh, see. Great. Um. The Kohen who offers it for sin should eat it. It must be eaten in a holy place in the court of the tent of meeting. Whatever touches its flesh will be holy when any of its blood is spattered on the garment. So remember we talked about, um, you know, being able to touch it. How do you get, how do you touch this? You get in yeah. touch with who Yeshua is, right? Amen. And then from there, splattered on the garment. You are to wash it in a holy place. Okay, y'all. So once again, we talk about these garments. We talked, the, the, the account of Yeshua talks a bit about his garments, doesn't it? And there was most certainly some blood splattered on it. Oh, yes. All right. Just God giving you the heads up. All these details yeah. covered. Right. Uh, and, and now one would say, it's like, oh, uh, this was uh, uh, orchestrated or, or anything like that. You know, this whole thing that Jesus did was just him trying to match up. You know, everything, you know, he was just some, you know, really uh, uh, effective hoax doer. So that man, how are you going to fake your own birth? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, no. I every, wondered that one. And, and, and once again, for what? For what? <laughs> no logical explanation can be given for why Yeshua would go through this whole thing, this elaborate hoax. Yeah. What did he get out of it? Right. Tortured? Yeah. Murdered? <laughs> you know? Uh no, that, that makes, there's, there's no logic to that whatsoever. None. All right. Um, let's see. So now from these things, you are to wash it in a holy place, but in an earthen vessel, when we talk about the, these things that are going, are going to be uh, burned or, or uh, I mean, I'm sorry, cooked, but an earthen vessel in which it is boiled is to be broken. And if it is boiled in a bronze vessel, it is to be scoured, then rinsed with water. 
every young male, every male among the Kohanim is to eat of it. It is most holy, but no sin offering from which any of the blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place is to be eaten. It must be burned up with fire. Let's talk about them clay pots. Okay, so we're going to make this uh, boil these things in there. You can't use the clay pots again after them. They got to be broken. The broken clay pot vessels that represents us, right? <laughs> Taken from the dirt, return to the dirt. Right. The sin that was, bur that was born, is, you could be the goodest person on the planet. Carrie hates what I say, goodest. <laughs> I do. I'm giving you the look right now. <laughs> All right. Yeshua atoned for me to be able to say goodest. <laughs> All right. So the clay pot, y'all, representing us, no matter how good you are, if you ain't in Yeshua, all your goodness, it don't, it don't matter, right? Nope. No matter what, this clay pot has to return. It's got to become dust again. Yeah. All right. So, but why not the bronze one? Because mm -hmm. remember, y'all, bronze represents salvation, repentance, and redemption. Mm. That's what the bronze represents. Okay, so you can cook it in that, just scour it and put it back in, uh, back on again. Because of the work of Yeshua, we get the new body, we get the new garments. That sin is removed from us. Amen. Right. So, y'all, we, we'll, we. The thing is, and and now one would wonder. Just let me say this really quick. One would wonder what what happens to free will from that. You yeah. know, if do we still have free will? Y'all, the free will that was given to us was given to us to make the ultimate choice. The ultimate choice. What you going to do with your free will? God, your will be done. Yes, yes. That's the ultimate choice of your free will. That's good. If the, the, the best thing I can do with my free will is say, well, God, your will be done. Yes. That's the ultimate, man, that's the, you want to talk about choice. That's the most pro-choice thing you can say. Right. Right? Absolutely. Because to be in this kind of pro-choice is to definitely be pro-life. Choose <laughs> yes. life. Choose life. Right? So that's what we're talking about in this. You're going to be redeemed. You're, you're, you're the bronze pot. The bronze pot that has the authority to cook the sin out of this completely. Yes. Right? And that's in Yeshua. All right, y'all. Let me see. I think, I think we covered it all. We got through it all. Indeed. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in the Zopium Den. CJ and I, thank you. And, uh, you know, once again, y'all, if you enjoy these studies, we hope that you support. The message is free. Delivering it ain't. You know, so if you uh, just get on over to bronzeserpentmedia.com and uh, you want to help, to help us to keep these uh, fellowships going, these studies going, classmates, uh, you know, we hope that you'll help us out with that. Got the mugs, you know, get these mugs so you can toast proper to the most high. Right. It's still cocoa season. That's right. <laughs> and it tastes so good coming out of here, too. Oh, my goodness. Better than whatever, whatever you're drinking out of. All right. <laughs> right. You got the book, A Solid Right Cross. Get that culture word coaching, y'all. Yeah. Be able to t uh, basically my book is going to tell you to read this. But, you know, but get it, y'all, so we can, you know, make sure that we, we, you know, we're armed up, you know, got some, uh, you know, got some tactics to be out, be out there to, 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 to do back against yes. the godless, you know, uh, who are trying to, um, and unfortunately, you know, being quite successful in, um, you know, perverting this republic. Yeah. You know, um, we understand that um, it's, it's been written. That these, you know, this is how it's going to go down in the world. But y'all, we don't, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to contribute to it. It is the same right. something where God is going to be pleased. We just say, well, God says that this is going to happen, so we just sit back and let it happen. God's will be done, yes, and ain't no stopping His will. But you might want to pray for the strength to be able to handle His will, and pray Indeed. for the strength to, to to stay in His will and not contribute. And you contribute to the downfall of this world if we don't do nothing. Right. You know, we got to we got to walk and talk in it, y'all. We got to make sure that, you know, we're, um, we don't let what the Lord blessed us with get voted away and stuff like that. Yeah. And just let the godless just impose laws that we have to live under. This don't please right. God. You know, we got to step and we got to we got to do our part to be that salt and light preserve what the Lord has blessed us with. Yes. You know, so, you know, like I said, I hope you all get my book, A Solid Right Cross, you know, and get some uh, get some coaching. On how to you know how to maintain to stay on our feet you know while yeah. we, we, while we well duke said. it out with the godless i know it helped right. me out a great deal nice <laughs> thank you thank you that being said if uh, cj and i may uh we 
ask of the Lord, you know, and the Holy Spirit to be all about y'all. Yes. That uh, just as you as you live, as you work, you know, as you as you play, whichever that, you know, you are a ministry, uh, that you are a blessing to the Lord and you do what pleases him that inspires other people to want to seek him as well. And, uh, you know, may he be about your health. May he be about, uh, you know, uh, your, your comfort, may he be about your strength. If you're in, you know, cases where you're, you're not comfortable and, uh, you know, things may be difficult, uh, you know, we trust in the Lord, you know, to be your strength. You know, yes. we trust in you, Father, to strengthen us. Uh, you told us to endure in faith into the end, which means that things can be uncomfortable sometimes. But we trust in you to be our strength. Yes. And uh, because we know. Uh, one, because you are just awesome. And because we know that you are the one who can, you know, who has made that place where yes, these things Lord. will not be a factor anymore. Yes. So we trust you to lead us into that place for you are our king. <laughs> yes. All right, y'all. It's opening then. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.